Kelly. Yes, hi. You're out here homeless. Tell me about it. Um, it's been really difficult. <laughs> um, you know, I was an able-bodied person. I worked my whole life from you know 16 on. Um, I uh, worked in customer service and sales. I was uh, awarded for my my work. I did really well in my in my field. Um, and unfortunately, you know, life happened. And my husband passed away. He contra had uh, gotten contracted esophageal cancer. And uh, it was very sudden. We were married for almost about 25 years. And uh, it kind of wiped out whatever savings that we had. Um, and uh, I've been struggling to uh, just get by on my own. So uh, it's been really difficult. I miss him with all my heart. He's my best friend. Um, so I'm, I'm not out here because I've decided to be. It's just because of that, just sheer life circumstance. Um, and uh, in the interim of that, I've tried to uh, um, redevelop my art that I, I've worked on, you know, pretty much my whole life, aside from my career, of course. But um, and that's what I've sort of revived doing over the course of the several years that I've been homeless. And your your art is online. It so is. So we'll, we'll have to be, you'll have to give me a link so people can see it. I and because that. of the traffic, you might need to speak up a little. All There's right. a lot of no noise around here. Understood. So after your husband died, it was just a spiral into homelessness? Um, after my husband passed, well, after he passed away, um, I, uh, I just, I was, I had to leave my apartment that we had. Um, and uh, we had moved out here for his job. Uh, he had a career move. And we had owned a home in Florida, um, and we had to had to really short sell that, unfortunately. And um, so then we moved out here. So that's what happened. And within about a year and a half, we found out that he had cancer, and then he had passed. Now you've been out here eight years. You told me it's been eight years. Yeah, he, yeah. He passed in uh, 2014, um, and I've been uh, the resources have been little to none. You know, getting out of homelessness. Um, I've, uh, it's di very difficult to try to find a job. Um, and uh, um, in terms of, I mentioned it would be Yale Buddy before, um, because of uh, the cleanups and uh, the constant moving, and it's, you know, um, it's really worked my legs really badly. Um, point where, you know, <laughs> before I was, you know, setting up trade shows and doing sales, and, you know, uh, even though I'm, uh, big girl I have hypothyroidism but even aside from that um, I was very uh, very fast and body and did my job very well you know um, this has has uh, ruined my body being the the cleanups constant cleanups is really difficult now cleanups you mean sweeps the sweeps rather they yes. come through and now you even wrote a letter to your council member I did yes I did several years ago um, I wrote a letter it was around our mother's day I wrote a letter to the uh, to, um, district councilman. Asked a really beautiful letter, you know, um, thanking him for what he had has done so far, you know, at that time. Um, pardon me, and uh, asking for, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> pardon. To can we please have a city station homeless encampment? Um, at that time, the, the community here was staying across the way in, in the in the waterway, kind of uh, the gully area. Uh, but unfortunately, that area is uh, the flood zone. And it has flooded a few times, so it is not safe. It's dangerous, but um, it served its purpose for its time, you know, in, the, in that regard. Um, and uh, I asked, "Could we please have a station in Kama?" Um, and uh, in this area, right in the Salvation Army, which is which is nice. Um, they was um, afterwards they had given us latrines, which is great. Um, and when you're food. And our workers can come here and help us find our housing and so forth. So those types of things have been beneficial afterwards. Um, the uh, um, there was one couple of air couple of things I had mentioned, which was over the holiday season, which was very heartbreaking, which was not okay. Um, which was uh, after Christmas, um, we had a major cleanup. Day after Christmas. Day after Christmas, they came through and totally disrupted everybody's lives. Yeah, December 26th. It was really bad. Really, really bad. And he hard told hard me they did it on Thanksgiving too. And then it was in a, our previous time was Thanksgiving. So what happens so, when the what happens when the city comes to sweep? Um, well, they do. They, well, they used to give us uh, when we were staying in the in the field area in the field area. 
we had two weeks notice. You know, we gave us two weeks, which is nice. It was nice enough time um, to uh, to gather our things and to move them along the time to like, to, like clean. Um, then, uh, from I had I had uh, done work elsewhere. I was just working really at my website for two years. So I wasn't in this area for two years. I just come back about a year ago, and um, now it's turned out to we have a two-day notice. So now we have 48 hours, and then I told one to my, it was 72, so I went from two weeks to 72 hours to 48 hours, and it's it's so um, taxing on the body physically. We have, you know, little calories to burn, you know, uh, so there's a lot, there's fatigue and all the things that go along with being, you know, um, hungry and starving and more famine. God willing, that doesn't happen. Um, so your body is already hurt because of that. Um, so that's not funny, it hurts, you know. Um, and um, so the time frame that, that you're given now to move your things along. So what do you have to do? Home. You have to take all your stuff and move that? Or yeah. do they take your stuff or what? You, you're asked to remove everything off the, off the property. Um, and they do a complete comprehensive clean, which comprehensive means they're just wipe everything clean. Now with, at one point in time, um, as a sort of recent, they were doing voluntary cleanups, which were you just do a spot clean. So you would, they were, you could leave your areas nice, the way, however it is, you could take out the trash that you wanted to be thrown away. And they would, it's cheaper that way for the county too. Yeah, it's and, more um, respectful. Um, yeah, Humans yeah. make trash yeah. and it has to be removed. House people get to pay for trash pickup. <laughs> You guys don't have that luxury. Yeah. Um, in our little corner of the world over here, uh, we were working really, really hard on keeping it, as I call, voluntary cleanup. So we were cleaning all of our put in our, in our, in our places, um, make sure there's no litter on the road. Of course, we have our, our uh, nice uh, um, you know, neighbors over here that they, they run their business and are very sweet and kind. And so we make sure there was no debris on the road, and nails, things like that that would hurt the tires. Of course, those those things would go without saying, of course, but we really make it a point to make sure that happens, um, make sure it's kept nice for them because they're so nice to us. So, How does it sweet. feel? How does it feel that every couple of weeks they come in and, and disrupt your life? Um, it, 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 raises, you know, it raises your blood pressure, it's very unsettling. Um, some, sometimes, um, what, the one point that's really difficult is, you know, they'll post within 48 hours, um, and which is kind of a good thing and a bad thing, it's sort of bittersweet, but, um, and they'll, for whatever reason, they may not come by, but we've moved everything out of their way, um, and then they've not swept the area. Let us move all in. It's just, it's just physically tough. It's tough. Now, do workers um, come? Do they offer you housing? Do they offer you support? Yeah, we had, we do have support. Like on, on Tuesdays, uh, we're, the workers that come from the organizations that help us with our with housing, you know, that we're the volunteers or or employees under under the umbrella of HUD right. or FEMA. I don't, it's HUD, I believe. Um, and uh, um, they're supposed to help, you know, help us. And they do come by. And they do. They are helpful. Um, but you've so, been here eight years. I've been, yeah, I've been eight, eight years. So why haven't they been able to help you get out of here? Um, I had one, unfortunately, I had one worker that, you know, I was uh, had worked with. I, um, and I had heard, really had to hear from the, this person in three and a half years. Oh, you know, gosh. and I would contact and contact and contact. Yeah, they change people all the time. And, you know, it was the same person, but for whatever reason, I found out later uh, through an adversary, I went to another organization and I put, put my name on some list that I didn't know anything about. And well, this is why we're in contact because there's some an environmental group thing. I don't know what that meant. I never had the clarification of it, but I, I was never told those types of things. You know, I wasn't, wasn't supposed to be out here for some reason. <laughs> no, I've asked for, you know, for many, many years, you know, I'm waiting for my apartment budget through Section 8 and then nothing ever happened. How do you survive yeah. out here? Um, well, the encampment um, has helped to some degree when it comes to the first person to bring, bring food. And um, they've been very helpful in clothing and so forth. So that's So how. you're surviving off just neighbors dropping off food? Um, yeah, and there are churches that bring, the, you know, that bring right. food for through their tithing and so forth. So. Um, uh, it's very, that's a very nice thing. It's but a that's very no sweet. way to, for people to live. No, and it's not. this is your home behind you, underneath mm, yeah. the blue tarp. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, um, but and they've been very, very gracious and kind. Yeah. Uh, but that's no way for anybody to live. 
No, I'm, I've never been complacent with living this way. Um, I've been a homeowner. I've been to college. Um, I don't. Um, uh, this is not something. It's not my way of life. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You're sober. Um, <laughs> always, always. Yeah. Um, I've never done drugs. I don't drink. Um, and uh, I've have always had a clean record. You know, obviously. Um, so uh, I'm a homeowner and so forth. And uh, I, I help the neighborhood watch. You know, I sign up for Neighborhood Watch, um, so I do that. I do help out that way. Uh, and uh, if it matters, I'm also uh, an on-call um, volunteer artist for the Neighborhood City Council. Oh wow! So yeah, I help with uh, the electrical panels that are painted. There's about 15 of them. Oh wow! So I assisted in one of them for a couple. Yeah, of I know days. what you're talking about. That's really neat. Yeah, yeah. A gal had that was. Uh, it gives you purpose. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful fun. Yeah. Couple days helping out with the city. And so I definitely do it again. Does obviously. the art help you? Help you get through the, the horrors of homelessness? Um, of course, yeah. Um, it definitely helps. It gives me, I mean, it always has been a direction in my life that's been very, very strong ever since, you know, elementary school. So yeah. um, it's uh, been a very strong uh, uh, purpose and goal of mine. You know, I hope, I'm uh, really hoping someday that uh, I can get shown. I've been, I've been shown, I've done gallery shows before. Um, during shows, rather, um, I have one push place in Blue Ridge and so forth. You know, a couple things. I had um, I, uh, one piece of work, rather large, was a mural. It was uh, invited to uh, be displayed in elementary school many, many years ago uh, uh, in New York. So it was very sweet. It was a big honor. Big honor. So very precious. Well, my heart breaks for you. My heart breaks for everybody here. Uh, everybody that's sleeping outside because you, you shouldn't be here. No. No, and, should, and people think most homeless people are uh, on drugs and those that have fallen like yourself because of economic disparity that there's plenty of support for. Yeah, I, I advocate very strongly uh, to anyone that comes by here to, to get off drugs. You know, I've never been on them yeah. and I've, got, but yeah, I've never had The public problems. believes that there's plenty but, of support for people like you that you know, you should be able to get your life back because there's so much help. But the truth is, you've been here eight years because there isn't help. Well, um, I understand. Yeah, uh, there there hasn't been the help. As of more recent, has been more of uh, because as funding or for whatever purposes, as far as I know, has always been there. Perhaps it wasn't allocated properly. I don't know. Um, but uh, I, yeah, I have been homeless for, for eight years. Um, however, the the housing that's been there. Um, like I said, you know, I, I was working with someone for three and a half years that had been heard from the person and thinking the whole time that something had been done right. or was being done with getting my information on the sexual aid and sexual aid could have that happen. Um, uh, I had information on, uh, found out about through, uh, there's an organizational pallet that has another prefabricated housing that the city's been putting, putting up. Um, and this is about a year ago. I had also written to the district office about that too. And then uh, at that time, um, a per person can stay in the pallet home for a year, you know, if they needed to, to get their life in order and get into permanent housing. Now it, you have three months. So you have three months to work with someone now to get into permanent housing. So, and, you know, it's like the window is getting shorter and shorter and shorter, you know, um, so I, I hope, you know, that person... Yeah, 90 day programs are just not enough time. I don't think it is. There's actually 30-day programs and that I've never been able to understand. Yeah, and in places like Alaska, even. Yeah. Well, I had a friend of mine who, who uh, was quite reputable, um, and he went. To, he did go to one of the, um, the shelters. He went to the, uh, one of the shelters in San Pedro. And uh, he, he's a very diligent guy. He's also been not, not homeless, too. Um, and uh, he worked for three months, and now he's ended up being homeless again. So, and he doesn't yeah. want to go back. What's the, what's the point? Go so, in the shelter just So, you know, why was, it, why was it going that duration of time, yeah. you know? I mean, as far as you know, there was supposed to be a set up housing. So, and we have more persons that are now being evicted because of, uh, I mean, there's, I know that there's a, the, the hold on rent for persons, persons are renting apartments yeah. and so forth. You know, but, you know, there was, I just heard of another family of five that were just evicted, you know, and where are they, you know? So um, now if we have 
the like Redondo Beach has had 15 places. It was small. Redondo Beach is small, which is fine. But um, they only had 15 pallet homes that were set up as an example. Yeah. And, they and took those down. pallet homes are so tiny. They are small, but they serve a good purpose. They have air conditioning, they have you know, heating. For, and so on. They do it for a short period of time, but there's no, the, the, here in Los Angeles anyways, they're not moving people from them. I mean, people are going to be in them for years, and they're but, they're going to house two people in each one of those. I, well, I, I'm not saying the purpose behind is not to have people live in them. Right, right. But, but you have, you know, it's like you're making the the uh, the housing fit the person, but right. it's the person that's to fit the housing. Ooh. It's the other way around. Right. You know, you've got this domicile, and you have to. For a petty domicile, right? It's the person. That's an important point. It's the person that has the the anomalies that happen yeah. in their life where they can't get the resources they need, but then, then you sort of pigeonhole into into this little square pig, yeah. and if they don't fit, then they're asked out again. So that's not that's not how it's yeah. supposed to work. So, how, how do we help you? How does somebody help you? How do we end homelessness? I think the workers need to be more diligent. I mean, I mean, I know there's there. You say that there's housing out there, but you know, why was my friend not able to get the help? There's no, workers there right isn't there housing out there. On That's the site. problem. There's yeah. workers on site trying to help him find a place, and he had no help. You know, um, so why was that? And the only I, I know it's only one case, and I don't have more you know, this is free right, this right. person. But I'm telling you, it was it was hurtful. So it was one living, breathing, good being has a roof over his head for, and for no reason. And he did what was asked of him. He got off the street. Okay. So um, why was he not helped? You know, I, I don't, it doesn't make any sense. I've been at, like, I mean, I've been in customer service and sales for like, 25 years, okay? I can walk in any situation, help any customer if I need to. If you take these persons that are homeless and treat them as they really are, if you want to take the viewpoint of, of your, this is your person, you're helping, this is your customer, in that regard, yeah. Um, you help the person. Otherwise, you get fired. Right. They don't. <laughs> if, treat I didn't, if I didn't do my job, you know. Right. They don't treat <laughs> us as consumers. <laughs> That's you know not what, what I mean. They I don't, mean yeah, but I'm I mean they don't. A, yeah. Go ahead. No, and, I mean these are beautiful. These are living, breathing people. Right. They, they have families. I mean they do have families. They have some of our grandparents and parents, and for whatever reason, it's unbeknownst to us as to why they're here and they're not with them. Yeah. None of our business. Yeah. You know, really, but. It is our business to help them make sure they not don't get hurt. Right. You know, and that they're helping them, they, they, they get the help they need. This country was founded on, you know, immigrants and immigration, and you know, there's there's laws like Georgian law, as far as I know, as far as still, you know, uh, available, where we it's just geared towards helping someone who just is less fortunate. We have to help our neighbors. Yeah, love our neighbor. So, if they had three wishes, what would they be? Uh, <laughs> Um, that's a tough one. Uh, I guess uh, my, my gallery is showing. You know, obviously, I uh, have a gallery show for my artwork again. Um, and uh, obviously, not be homeless. And uh, see my family again. Great wishes. Well, thank you very much for talking. Thank you. Not that I have a joke. Family's home first. Yeah, I love my family. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. And thank you for your help today. I hope this helps other people.